everybody. I'm up my flicking feathers again today and I'm tying a deadly saw water part. And this is the Albicore. Um, as the name suggests, it's designed for Albicore. Albies, folks, Albies. But it's um, great for all kinds of species. Uh, Benito will eat it, Mahi Mahi will eat it, uh, all, all the all saltwater bass eat it as well. Well worth tying some of these in various sizes. Now as always we'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content and enter the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos, then you can come and watch them. Alternatively, like the video, share the video, watch it all the way to the end, leave a comment below. All of that helps the channel. So I've got my hook and my vise. This is a size 2 and it's a Gamakatsu S10S 4H, right? It's a standard, it's a short SL12, short shank, shortish shank. Uh, so what hook, I like the shorter shank, so I've got a wee bit more wiggly tail. But tie these, say, from about a uh, four. Um, you can, you know, you, in your preferred saltwater hook, a four, maybe even a six, up to about a one oh. You know, go for, they work well when that's at a seven or six and a half, seven centimetres, up to ten, eleven. So two and a half to four inches, sort of size. Now I've run on some clear mono thread. You can use white flat wax if you wish. Um, now originally this fly would be tied with hot glue, but I don't really think there's any need still to be using hot glue, hot glue to tie these. Um, UV resins provide you with the opportunity to tie a much more durable fly. Uh, And it's much easier to work with, right? Um, and it never yellows. You know, hot glue will yellow if you've got them in your box for a while. You know, say you tie up a dozen and you get through eight of them in your season. A year later, you might open the box and find that they've yellowed. Anyway, so I'm starting with some flash. I'm using silver crystal flash here. And I've got four strands. Just tying it in, I'm, that's the first thing I'm tying in, doubled over. Right, this wee bit of flash in the middle, you'll still see it in between the hackle tail. Uh, you don't need to tie it down the sides because you've got to have the big lateral flash. And it's actually quite nice having it in there in the middle. Um, when you, I mean, if you look at the fly, if you can strip it in front of the boat, you look at it, you'll see it kind of flickering between the the feathers. Um, very nice. So I've got two. Just these are just strung saddle hackles, right? You don't need to use good hackles for these, right? Don't don't be don't be getting into your good saddles, your flat wing saddles, and that. This is just the cheap Chinese strung, right? They're, they're absolutely perfect for this. So I'm going to tie these pair so that they're like curving away from each other, right? Like a bass bug tail or something. And these don't have a very pronounced curve, so that's so that's fine. I don't want them. I don't want a frog, right? Um, but they're going to the the next tackle then the is going to be going the other way. So it just helps with the movement. So just tie mine on in my side, and you'll notice I've no stripped the feather around. I'm just leaving it. Right, you don't don't start fussing with these. Right, um, just make sure that they're the same length. Get them tied in. Right, trim away. And just tidy up. Right, and as I say, don't be fussy. Right, I'm just leaving the wee bits of scrap feather. Um, <coughs> because when I tie in the cactus chenille body and I put 
the thin resin on it, it will soak in and that will, it'll, the resin will penetrate to this, right? Um, and it just helps, you know, it does the same thing as the hot glue did in the original, it just makes it very durable. So, I've got some tan, I kinda, it's quite dark this tan, but I quite like it for these rebate fish like silver sides and things. Um, colours, I mean, you can change the colours up. I generally just fish tan or all pearl, um, sometimes a chartreuse, but I know guys like pink and all that, uh, it will depend on your fishery. So I'm just going to wrap this forward, I'm, I'll sweep it back, but I'm not being too fussy, right? I just want to get a, a base on. I'll come up, and that's fine, I'll leave myself a good, a good eye length for all the work that I need to do at the front. So tie that off. I'm try to sort of sweep everything back. You'll still get, you'll still disturb stuff um, as you're as you're doing this, but I'll try to make it relatively tidy at the moment because it will help me later. Now, I'm going to take my next tackle and I'm going to size it, and it, this can be the same length. Or slightly longer, right? It mustn't be shorter than the tail, I think. Right? If you make it shorter than the tail, the fly doesn't really seem to swim, right? Uh, and I'm going to just come in, check the length, strip that, and I'll see how it sits again before I do any resin stuff. Just a wee bit more. There we go. Right. Now that I've got the length, I'll do the other one so that I can just crack on with things. I mean, you could you can prepare these ahead of time, but I prefer just to select the hackles ahead of time and then size this stage as I go. Uh, so. to help things, I'll just take a wee bit off the side. Don't cut it close, just a wee bit just to let it sort of bed in. And then I'm going to take thin, this is solar rest thin, and I'm going to put a bead of this, and I'm pushing it in, right, and I'm going to come right back onto this saddle, just touch this saddle here. And then I'll take the first one, and you see I want it curving in, and I'll just offer that onto the side. And I'll press, and then I'll hit it with the light. Then I'll go back, and I'll just. I took the light all the way along. And then I can come in with my thread and lock that off. You can use your dubbing needle if you don't like to touch the feather. Um, but I find, or if you don't like to touch the resin I should say, but I find that I, I, I prefer the, the control on my finger. Then on this side, again, I'm going to come in and just come back and touch this saddle at the back, and that prevents any fouling, right? That that's that's enough there. Just that we touch on that saddle, that will absolutely stop that tangling up. So we'll take the next feather, again curving in. Put it in. I, and as I was saying, right, you can, if you wish, you can like, press it in like that. But I do prefer, I do prefer to use my finger. If 
a second one. I'm just going to catch that and uh, a loose turn of thread just to grip things. Then I'll come back, set everything up, and I want it to sit up right along the hook shank, parallel to it. Right, and that's nice there both. It's just a wee bit longer than the two below. We're looking good. Trim that away. <coughs> and now I'm going to use silver lateral scale. When I tie the all white one, I use the Mirage lateral scale or pearl, which is fine. But the tan one, I like it with the the silver. Now, since I'm on this side, I'll just do this side. I'll just come in, I've got a single length, set it in. Let's wrap a thread there, another one, and you can fold this back and tie over it. And this is this means I'll be able to like, tug on it um, or pull it when I'm about to set the resin. So dead easy. Same again. We thin bead. Pull it back. And I'll take a bit another bead before I set it in I'll just and it make this be very light. You don't want it you don't want a heavy heavy thick coat, you just want a wee light Layer, just enough to seal it and hold it in place. Check it straight, put it back. And zap it with the light. It's no bad. Now, just to show you, I've got a wee crease. There's a wee kind of kink in this strand, a uh, lateral scale just there. So, I'm going to let that be controlled by the resin rather than wasting the piece. Right, we'll just let that be in the, the central part of the body because the resin will hold it flat. I'm just going to do the same thing again. Catch that and fold it back. So my way the e waste piece. You can see how it's all sticking up because of that kink, but that's fine. So again, a small bead. And just come in again. Don't 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 be heavy handed here. You just want a wee amount. Pull them straight back. And zap them. And make sure you sort of angle it because you want to get let, let the light get under it. Um, <coughs> I'm going to bake this. Uh, I'm going to bake this in a salon lamp so I don't need to worry too much and the last thing I'm going to do now is stick on some I've got some 5mm eyes here which I think are a nice size for this fly you could go bigger or smaller you can use dome eyes if you prefer but I like the flat eye and then just in case it would resin. So get one on. And I like it just to, I just rest it at the back of the hook eye 
and we'll come in again. A wee bit of that. Again, just the thin resin. I'm just using the same resin for the whole fly. And I'll just set that up. Get it to set. And again, just take your time, make sure you get it right. Now that, that is just not cooperating. That's not a problem. Just get another wee fold and put it back on. And that's much nicer. I'm just gonna put that wee spot on. You know, if it if it if it doesn't if it doesn't work, just how you want it right away, you can come back. I mean, these eyes are pretty tough. You can crease them and fold them and mess about until you get what you want. That's that one in place. Next one. And again, this is just, I'm just putting them in place at the moment. I'm going to coat them so you don't need to be, I don't need to be too worried about like if there's a space or a wee gap or anything. All I want to do is make sure I get them in the same position on either side. And again, like, I mean, you, how fussy you got to be, you could... You could just super glue in a, a dome eye and then come back and get a resin in and it would be fine. But I'm just building it as one sort of continuous, you know the resin's all a single piece right, it's like inside the, inside the chenille. It's between the eyes, it's around the eyes. And it makes your fly very, very tough. You know, you can catch many, many fish on these. Um, I mean, I don't know that the, the, the hackle's the weakest thing. The hackle's relatively tough as well. So I'm just finishing that off with a a final turn, I'm just going to rotate it until I got a nice shape that I like and I'll zap it. I mean, there's nothing stop me using a heavy resin for the head there if you want, but uh, I just the thin's fine, you know, it, it kind of will soak into that chenille again and hit the stuff underneath. And like I say, because there's material on top, right? You know, you've got the the, the lateral scale. You might say sort of in the way where the light was trying to cure. That chenille's reflective. <coughs> um, it's definitely worth sitting these. Or, if you don't have a salon lamp, although I would recommend getting one if you don't, if you set them on your windowsill, really let them cook. Um, but great fly, well worth tying. Really, really catches fish. Um, and they're tough, they're tough as boots. So we'll tie some up, catch some fish on them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, hope it was useful. If it was, please remember to give me a thumbs up below, and I'll see you for another one. Take lines, guys, bye.